Okay. So we did, right, we, we wrote down these flow relationships in terms of Mach numbers and pressures and densities, but you should realize we never invoked that equation of state yet, which is critical to all compressible flow, right? We never involved any sort of ideal gas law. So that's what we have to get to next, right? So remember we had this control volume. And it was going down like this. Right? There's a changing area involved. Something like this. Here's, here's that CD. And, and we have, let's say we're just getting from state A to state B. So here's an interesting this little mistake I've done on purpose to kind of show you again where the whole purpose of this compressible state mental piece and like that. So let's just say naively you're going like, okay, how can I relate now? How can I get my red, uh, equation of state used, let's say, and going from here to here at velocities? Well, you could just do the energy equation that we had before. Right? And if I'm along here, that means these are done for. Okay? And then you would have, right, something like this. Okay, so right, a P, right, P, right, pressure over rho, remember that the ideal gas law says what? It gets you from pressure to a temperature, right? Right, so now I can invoke temperatures. Temperatures are measurable quantities that can tell you about pressures and densities and everything, all that other good stuff. <clears throat> so you can also then consider reference ref, right, right, you can consider reference pressures as well, or reference velocities. So the idea of stagnation. So stagnation being of zero velocity, and that would give you then right something to work with. <clears throat> so let's make stagnation, say this is zero. Okay. And then you would be able to relate right two temperatures and a velocity. So I'm going along naively. I do that. I say I'm going to reference stagnation. Now here's a temperature. I'm can right here's a temperature, and then I have some velocity squared over two RT. Yeah, and then this is an R T naught, or this is going to be my stagnation side. <clears throat> okay, if you reworked everything, then you could get then. Right, you'd some ratio look like this R T. So again, it's T T T naught. Just reworking this expression to get the ratio, and then if you used right the definition of what that gas constant was, you would get this. Okay, this is wrong. <clears throat> That is the wrong answer because it, of this factor of CP minus the CV in there. You could get the wrong answer we used the expression because of something that went wrong doing this up top. Now, what was it that we used up top that was wrong? Well, we didn't use anything. I mean, ideal gas law was used right here and right here, so it seems that was okay to do. Well, you know, where, what, you know, what went wrong then for getting this expression right there? What wrong, wrong then is this energy equation we used did not speak of the internal energy. Right? So this, let's say this is the same. Okay. What went wrong there is you did not include internal energies into yours. So this really should have a, had a UA per unit mass, an internal energy per unit mass, right? Right, the Zs will still be the same. Okay, this is what you should have written if the Z's are the same, so there's no neg negligible gravitational potential. And I'm okay doing that in my problems, by the way, because since it is plug flow, I could take this at any level, and it would still be the same. I don't think this could be that different. Okay, but then that's really what went wrong, is actually you forgot to put this, these terms in there, which are the internal energies of the system. Now, internal energy, right, remember we had that, right, it could be a function of temperature, and it could be a function of, like, volume as well. <clears throat> 
the W is a function of temperatures or changing temperatures, right? These will be different. So you have to include that. And that's where enthalpy comes into play, right? Because if you use this expression, right, then you would get that the stagnation enthalpy, if you look at the difference of these things, would have to write an enthalpy plus a V squared over 2. Just because it's the combination, it's the algebraic, some of these two things that matter in compressible flow, not just the pressures. Forgetting to put this in here is the added thing we have to do for compressible flows if you're doing this expression right here. And you do it so much that that's why you have these enthalpy relationships for measuring gases and things like that. Because if you just did this all the time, we assume too many differences, etc. But if you just call this an H at B and this an H at A, now you can get further in your energy equations. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> so now it's the same thing. Now I go over here. It should not be zero. Now I could over have over here then a difference in enthalpy must equal velocity or eight, over two. Okay. And now this difference of enthalpy, we go back to that definition, right, that we had that CP, what was it equal to? It was a DH a DT. <clears throat> Okay, so then if you integrate this, right, you're going to get right that. Like that. Right? So yeah, I'll be right. That CP relationship is used right here because that's what you need to put for here. Right? Now that enthalpy can relate to temperature. Now you would get the right relationship to involve temperatures and velocities. Simple mistake you would do all the time. The energy equation you use for compressible flow has an added term in there when the differences make us use enthalpies. So now you have the correct relationship about stagnation temperature and it looks like this. So, boom. All right. Remember before what we had here doing it falsely, right? Before we had this. This was wrong. This is right. It's a CP, not the CP minus CV. All right. Not quite done yet because. This velocity, we want to turn into a Mach, right? We want Mach numbers because the Mach numbers will tell us things about supersonic and subsonic flows involved. OK, so then a Mach squared is a velocity squared over c squared. I have a velocity squared there, so it it's pretty, makes enough sense to do something like this. And then ideal gas law, right, will tell me this. No, not small. Boom. Okay. This This is where ideal gas law is invoked. A Mach number is V over C. If it's dry air, it can use ideal gas law, and it can express the speed of sound in terms of temperatures and R's, and then this gas constant. Or any gas, but that's where this gamma comes into play. Okay, so we're just now subbing all this stuff into this relationship, and then we will get, right? And now you get some workable, useful equation, right? It's a stagnation temperature over the temperature, 1 plus Mach squared amazing okay now we have things that we can use right this is telling you now temperatures temp the right the right stagnation to a temperature I'm at is related to the Mach relationship and then thing and then this gas behavior like here so this is sort of like the first goal right is you can go from state A to state B Okay, if this is a stagnation state, right, if it's some giant reservoir where there's no velocity happening and I isentropically let it evolve to state B, 
and there's a velocity at the exit, you could use this to predict things, right? So if it means the velocity here is zero, and then there's some velocity here, it gives you a mock at the outlet, right? You could figure out the temperature. If you knew this temperature here, or a stagnation temperature. This value here can be measured as tabulated as well. So any temperature is a stagnation temperature to there, right? This stagnation temperature is to move, right, is to move a gas isentropically to that value. So it's zero there. Mach is zero. So stagnation terms refer to when the Mach is zero, and you can get to then a, a, a reference Mach number. <clears throat> okay. So this is this is sort of the biggest first step we've made in compressible flow is this idea now of relating these temperatures to now flow and medium right here. This is the goal we were after, right? We want to talk about the flow and the Mach and then the medium that I'm traveling in. And now I can relate temperature quantities to that. Now we can also enjoy the fruits of labor of those Gibbs equations for an isentropic process, right? Remember that Gibbs equations related things to temperatures, right? The Gibbs relationships for an isentropic process, which we are assuming we are doing. My process of flow, I'm saying, is isentropic, so I can use the Gibbs relationships. They said, well, the ratio of the stagnation pressure, et cetera, are related, related to this. Remember before I had P2 and P1? Well, for the flow problem, you actually have to have stagnation to a certain pressure. So it's a little bit different in terms of the flow variables. But as you can see here, I had this. Well, I have an expression due to all my compressible analysis that I can just sub into these power relationships. I remember they had another one, too, for densities as well. Right, do you know that? And what was that one? That was just one over. OK. These are from thermodynamic analysis of isentropic processes. This relationship came from combination of continuity or conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and an equation of state to figure out how relations to temperatures can relate to relationships of flow and velocities. <clears throat> so then you get these three, then you finally get three relationships, or if there's even four, right? In red, because remember that C. Right, remember this, so you can even have a stagnation velocity of sound. But that's what these that's that's why we're gonna start developing so many equations because it gives our three equations. So every reference state will give you three separate relationships based on your um, flow problem. So right, here's this one. This one, right? Really, nothing more than just taking this expression and plugging it in here. But maybe just, right? To explicitly see now, right? I'm just re re rewriting those relationships now, but I'm just using my Mach relationship that I derived before. And then you can even have this one too. The, me the, right, the speed of sound in the media will actually change with temperature as well because of the gas laws that we have, right? And then this one is just to the one half. And that's just from taking that ratio of the C relationships that were from thermodynamic processes, right? So everything we did was really just to get here. That's like this was all lecture 15 almost to just get that expression. And then it's just simple substitution that came from thermodynamic relationships or the Gibbs relations. And that gives you now pressures and densities and speeds, et cetera, to now calculate as references. And then really what you use these things for is a giant reservoir, right, going into some other state because you have stagnations involved. Right, should be And this is referring, right, 
these reference variables are all referring to a Mach of zero at that state. So at state one, if you have Mach zero and you have a stagnation properties and you're getting to now some other Mach, you can relate the two and calculate these quantities. Next is then a critical Mach number, right? I'll just right, lay it out right here. This was done for a T naught and this, and then we can immediately go here. But the idea is, right, the other reference you could have is when Mach right, equals one, or sonic flow. And then there's Mach greater than one, supersonic. So you're just pointing out two, if you had an axis, right, We've just ident we're just identifying two parts of this axis and then relating any other ones to it. So wherever else I am on this scale, I can at least relate back to Mach 1, or I can relate back to Mach 0. Critical stagnation. Stagnation. I don't know why there's light coming in right now. Okay. So next we're going to talk about then the critical mock relationship values.